I had a dream! Four score and seventy years ago. Luke, I am your father. Ask not what your country can do for you, but ask what you can do for your country. Ouch, Charlie! Charlie bit me! Hey, I just met you. This is crazy, but here's my number. So call me, maybe. Hello world, I'm David Dorn, and this is Preposterous. Okay, I'm not very good at impressions. I, yeah, I get that. But I always find it fun to see what quotes from movies and music and TV shows and even YouTube videos that captures people's attention and imagination. Well, this week we're in Matthew chapter 5, verses 3 through 12, and this is the beginning of one of the most famous and most quoted sermons of all time. It not only can capture your imagination, it will change your life. Let's look at it. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile you and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You know, at first glance through this, it looks like Jesus is just saying, blessed are a bunch of random people groups. And growing up, I used to think that this was the checklist of what it meant to be the perfect Christian. But I don't think that's what Jesus is trying to say here. I mean, l let's look at who Jesus is actually talking to. If you look at the verses prior to this, Jesus was going about the area teaching and preaching the gospel and healing people. Now, this was before, you know, doctor's offices and Walmart pharmacy. People didn't have a means to get better, and Jesus is going about and completely healing all kinds of sicknesses. I, he's doing miracles, and people are seeing this, and they're drawn to him, and they're starting to follow him everywhere he goes. Jesus looked at the crowd and it said he wanted to teach them. Now oftentimes in the Bible when Jesus looks at the crowd, he, the Bible says that he is overwhelmed with compassion for them. Have you ever had that happen? Have you ever seen somebody and you were just overwhelmed with this need to, to help them? That's often what Jesus is experiencing. And here he looks upon them and he wants to teach them. So he goes up on this hill and he looks down on them and he says, Blessed are the depressed, the people who are grieving, the humble, the, the people wanting righteousness, the people who show mercy, the people who are pure hearted, the people who make peace, and the people who are bullied because of their belief in God. Now let me ask you this, what did these people have to do in order to be blessed? Nothing, <laughs> except for showing up. Jesus is addressing the people who showed up, the people who had been following him, the people from all walks of life, the real people with real problems. And he is looking at them and saying, you are blessed. Now this blessing is not something that they had to work toward. You know, I don't know many people who work hard at being depressed. Let's face it, not many people go out of their way to be bullied. When is the last time you saw somebody wanting to grieve the loss of a loved one? And I have often found that people who want righteousness are the ones who are currently or have lived pretty bad lives in the past and they want something different. Jesus is talking to the people who are right in front of him, but he's also talking to us today. How many of us walk around depressed? How many of us walk around grieving because our parents got divorced or we lost somebody we loved, or 
we moved away from friends who were really close to us. How many of us try to bring peace in the situations we find ourselves in because of our home life is anything but peaceful? How many of us have had mercy and kindness shown to us so we try to pass that on to other people? How many of us have really tender hearts and people trample all over us because of that? How many of us are bullied because we don't do what everybody else does? Jesus is talking to us where we're at. And he is saying, blessed are you for simply being you. Now this idea of accepting yourself has become very popular in our culture now. Thank you, Lady Gaga. You know, baby, I was born this way. I'm beautiful in my way, cause God makes no mistakes. I'm on the right track, baby, I was born this way. Okay, I get it. I'm not good at impressions. Let's move on. But Lady Gaga only gets us halfway there. She's only telling us half of the story. But Jesus tells us the other half. Jesus says, I accept you for who you are and where you're at, but I love you too much to leave you there, to leave you the same way. I don't know about you, but there are some things that come naturally to me that um, are not so great. I can be very prideful and I can have a really bad temper. But I showed up, I started following Jesus, I, I gave my life to him, and he's not only working on those areas of my life, but so many more. He loves me for who I am, but won't leave me that way. And he says the same thing to you. Now this is completely different than what the world tells us, what even our friends say. You know, we hear all the time, work harder, and, and you know, even change who you are in order to get accepted, to get the job, get the promotion, get popular, make the team, you name it. But what Jesus says is, show up as you are. For me, that's a wow moment. That is one of those moments where I just sit back and go, wow, God loves me now. <laughs> I've actually got goosebumps. God loves you. Now Jesus does say in verses 11 and 12 that if you start following me, if you start allowing me to change your life, the world is going to reject you. Your friends may make fun of you. You may even be bullied and in some areas even persecuted. But Jesus says you are blessed if that is your experience. Did you know that around the world, thousands and thousands of Christians are persecuted and killed every year because of their faith? The world doesn't like it when you mess with their system and Jesus messes with the system. But now it's your turn. Uh, you know, every week I'm gonna ask you to go out and do what we're talking about and film a video response to tell me how that was. But I can't really do that this week. All right, guys, I want you to go out and grieve for a few days and then come back and tell me how that was. I want you to work really hard this week at being humble and get back with me. You see, it doesn't work. So instead of that, I want you to tell me your story. Why did you show up? What brought you to listening and even following Jesus? You know, for the crowds that Jesus is talking to, they started following him because he was healing their friends and family and even themselves doing miraculous works and they were just drawn to him. They wanted to hear what this man had to say because he had something that they didn't. But what's your story? May you recognize that you are blessed simply for showing up. God bless. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed Preposterous, make sure you like this video and share it on Facebook with your friends. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to us here on YouTube and you can follow us on Facebook and Twitter. As always, if you have any questions for me, you can tweet me at I am Preposterous. And if you're a small group leader and would like to use Preposterous for your small group, you can sign up on our website at preposterousproject.com. God bless.